the transfer window, uh, or at least some one, is shut for another year. Um, you know, Premier League teams had 11pm uh, on the 30th of August to get uh, some signings in, and that's exactly what they've done. Um, and yeah, as usual, this see, this window seen countless moves as teams that to strengthen their position, um, and we picked out some winners and losers. So let's get straight into it. Starting off with a winner, uh, Brighton. Talk about Premier League spending power. Brighton have already spent a massive two hundred thirty-one million euros as they look to get back into European competitions um, under the new manager Hersler and spending on the likes of uh, Ruta, Minta, uh, Wefa, um, Gorda, um, and Matt O'Reilly. All of these incomings. The Seagulls' best show was uh, striker Dennis and Dove. Uh, uh, so eventually spent like a big six club and also sold some players as well. Um, and, you know, they started off really strongly in the season too. Uh, a loser is Arsenal. How they'll be judged um, is whether they signed a forward. And unfortunately, um, yeah, they signed Sterling. Um, but have they really got that sense forward that they required? I'm personally not sure that they have. Uh, Calafori and um, Marino... Um, Look like they could be interesting signings, but not signing a versatile centre forward um, could be costly. I think Sterling is a good signing, but as we've seen recently, he is partly on his way down. A goalkeeper could be good with Ramsdale leaving, um, but yeah, um, until they get that proper player, and I'm not sure about Liverpool. Um, but a winner is Liverpool. Um, of course, they had a quiet transfer window. Uh, obviously, got that keeper in from Valencia, but he's gone straight back on loan. But I think um, Chiesa could be a really good signing to allow someone like him for such a cheap price um, as good cover for Salah. I think that could be a really good move for them as they look to really launch a more successful title battle this year with more squad depth and that's definitely adding to it. A loser is Newcastle. A year after being in the Champions League, Newcastle could be in for another successive job. You know, they just haven't really been able to spend much like Lloyd Kelly on a free, etc, etc. A sealer for 11.6 million, um, a goalkeeper for 23.6 million. But yeah, Newcastle kind of just reliant on already existing players for them, which is a bit of a shame. A winner though is Aston Villa. They've added certain squad decks the likes of Philogy, Matson, Onana, spent a lot of money, Ross Barkley, um, players like that. And I think, yeah, um, questions about whether they'd be able to really sustain a good pre- Premier League push, um, you know, this year. I think they will. I think they've got the squad that they spent well, and I think that would be useful for them. Um, and also, good teams that had a good window. Milan City bringing Gudurán back. Alvarez will be a lot, good loss, but I think he can be a crucial signing. Savinio looks interesting too. Manchester United have definitely been um, back, and I think they could be in a good position for a top four. And Spurs have made some interesting long-term potential signings as well, including Archie Gray. So an interesting window all round. Hey guys, that's it for this video. Thanks for much for watching. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. Follow us on our socials. Link in the description below for daily football news, memes content subscribe for our other channels on screen right now that'd be greatly appreciated thanks very much for watching peace out